Okay, let's start with this really cool shot of Mars. Because today, even though we're discussing our own planet, planet Earth, it's really Mars that seems to be the reason something is happening on Earth every two and a half million years. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss this somewhat new study that, completely by accident, discovered that planet Earth goes through very specific cycles because of Mars. And though this shouldn't really come as a surprise because a lot of other planets influence planet Earth in a lot of different ways, what is surprising is that these effects are observable in a lot of sediment and seem to be relatively significant. So yeah, technically this is going to be a climate video. So I think you're going to have one of those side notes automatically added by YouTube somewhere below. And so today we're going to be discussing a kind of a unusual climate change. A climate change that seems to be directly caused by a planet. But something that we kind of understand pretty well. This is a type of a Milankovitch cycle. Various effects in regards to the Earth's movements around the solar system, usually influencing things like eccentricity or axial tilt or precession, that were officially confirmed by looking at various sediments back in 1976. And we know that there are different cycles that seem to have different lengths, usually in thousands of years, but some of them seem to be very dramatic. And there's a lot of evidence that the modern ice ages are very likely the result of the Milankovitch cycles as well. With quite a lot of them discovered in the last decade or so through various simulations involving the solar system, but without actual understanding of what effects they might have on the planet just yet. Also here it's important to highlight that these cycles are very long term. They don't actually just happen overnight and they usually take thousands of years to develop with some of the shorter ones taking at least a few hundred years. And that's because orbital changes, or the way Earth spins around its axis, does take some time to actually take effect. But the evidence is very clear. It comes from a lot of different samples, from a lot of different sources, but time and time again we see these unusual cyclical formations. Here's an example of levels of CO2 discovered in different ice cores going back 400,000 years. And so in this recent study that as always you can find in the description below, researchers discovered yet another cycle completely by accident. But they were studying something entirely different. And here this is actually a really good segue into the dangers of modern headlines. This was actually posted and reposted in a lot of different media and was essentially something like this. Ocean currents are going to shut down as early as 2025 leading to a climate disaster. Although if you do keep reading, it does say that it's between 2025 and maybe 2095. Either way, this unusual headline was republished in a lot of different media sources and did make a lot of climatologists somewhat upset. Because it's actually kind of wrong. It's completely incorrect and is not at all what climatologists were trying to say. They did discover that the currents at the bottom of the ocean are actually going to change because the water is going to be getting warmer and warmer. But the problem is that it's actually unknown if it's going to become stronger or weaker. And although some models did discover that the circulation system, especially in the Gulf Stream, could maybe shut down if the global sea ice melts completely, there were different models suggesting something entirely different. And so in other words, at the end of that particular study, it was determined that it was unclear and more studies were necessary. And the media, like the Guardian, said, no, 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 the Gulf Stream is shutting down, let's publish it. Although maybe check out some of the additional links in the description from actual climate scientists that do give us a slightly different story. And so because of this somewhat alarmist headline, and also because of basically unclear results from previous studies, a different group of researchers wanted to take a look at more sediments going back in time just to see what they actually discover and if they can find more answers. Once again mostly focusing on the Gulf Stream because that's the one that's kind of making everyone nervous. Although in this study they did have an extremely large sample, involving different types of drilling sites across different stations, just to get as much data as possible. In this case they based their analysis on 293 scientific deep sea drill holes from various locations, exploring evidence from sediment all the way to 70 million years ago. And when it comes to sediment in the ocean, and especially when it comes to the current strength, we know that when the current is overall stronger, there's a kind of a break in sediment, naturally because water carries things farther and the sedimentation process is not as efficient. But when the current slows down and when the water is not as powerful, there's a much more steady sediment accumulation, which in essence kind of appears similar to, I guess, tree rings. And so by looking at nearly 400 different breaks in a lot of these sediments, they were able to plot a kind of a change over time, noticing something really unusual. There was a kind of a cycle, roughly around 2.4 million years in length. A cycle that also correlated with some of the biggest events 
in Earth's history in the last 50 million years. For example, the famous PETM. The event when the Earth was suddenly extremely hot, that we discussed in one of the previous videos, that occurred approximately 56 million years ago. During this time, Earth's temperature was approximately 8 degrees warmer on average than it was a million years prior. Some of the videos in the description explore this period a little bit better. And strangely enough, this unusual cycle seems to actually be somewhat similar to a resonance between Earth and Mars. In other words, the gravitational interaction between Mars and planet Earth potential results in some sort of a change in Earth's oceans that seems to recur every 2.4 million years. In other words, this is also a kind of a Milankovitch cycle, but much longer than any of the other ones, and maybe with different effects. And this is, of course, not really surprising. All of the other cycles are very likely caused by Jupiter and Saturn, but those two planets are really massive, thus resulting in much more dramatic effects. Mars, though, is not, but it's much closer. And because it does form a resonance with planet Earth, this seems to have some sort of an effect on Earth after all. Now, they don't actually call it Milankovitch cycle, here they just refer to it as the Grand Cycle, but it's definitely some sort of a pattern linked to the orbital alignments. And if this is correct, it also seems to have somewhat intriguing effects on the planet. First effect is higher solar radiation. This could be due to some kind of an orbital change, such as, for example, reduced eccentricity, or maybe reduction in the magnetosphere. The actual reasons are still unknown. But the second effect seems to be warmer climate. Now, this is obviously something that happens over much longer periods, very likely taking hundreds of thousands of years to become noticeable, but that's in essence one of the discoveries from this study. And because we know that there is a link between Milankovitch cycles and ice ages, this should not come as a surprise. But it does raise an intriguing question. If Mars does this to us, what about Venus? Venus is much closer and more massive, and so the overall effects should be even more pronounced. So far there is no evidence for any of this, but if they are correct about Mars, there should be signs from Venus as well. And if it does affect the planet, it's probably by affecting the eccentricity. It's unlikely to affect anything else. But I guess even more importantly, they discovered additional evidence in regards to ocean circulation. It's quite likely that the ocean circulation is not going to be stopping anytime soon, with this new data suggesting that the oceans seem to be very resilient and don't actually change currents that frequently. There is a chance that the ocean currents might weaken within the next 100 years if the ice completely melts, but there seem to be mechanisms in the oceans that prevent it from stopping completely at least based on the data from the study and from these 300 sites around the planet. But intriguingly, that Martian cycle, at its maximum, seems to intensify water circulation that does affect the climate. And some of the more extreme periods on the planet, where the temperature was really hot, were very likely caused by ocean circulation changes, with many of them maybe the result of orbital interactions, or so-called astronomical forcing. And so I guess just another cycle for us to learn about and to try to understand how it affects our planet. But because, once again, it's Mars and it's relatively small and not very massive, there is maybe still a chance that something else is causing this or the effects are not as dramatic. Now, definitely visible in the sediment and definitely affecting the planet to some extent, but it's really probably the combination of a lot of different cycles, all sort of happening at the same time, that usually causes these extreme events, such as the one that happened 56 million years ago. Definitely an intriguing discovery, and something we'll come back and talk more about once there's more information and additional discoveries. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.